I'd like to begin by welcoming Mar Margaret Cho to the shrinking blue bubble that is Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're having a good time so far. And I'm, I'm wondering, do you have a favorite Fort Lauderdale or Wilton Manor spot when you come to town to visit? Uh, no, I'll have to find one, you know. Um, it's pretty rare. Like, I've only been here a few times. Um, so it's it's never long enough to really see what's good and, you know, hang out. It's usually just do a show and then leave. So um, I need to find some places. Well, we have plenty of recommendations for you, for right. sure. Um, so your current tour is called Live and Livid, which is fitting because we have so much about which to be livid. Uh, where would you like to begin? <laughs> Well, this is um, what's happening in my city in Los Angeles. So in San Francisco, with the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence were disinvited to the Pride celebration at Dodger Stadium, which to me is like, they're like bending to controversy. There's no controversy. The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are a very historic queer organization. Mm -hmm. They are really important to the community. Absolutely. It's not lewd. It's not not sacrilegious. Well, I mean, they're all it, dressed in you know habits and. It, it's just like w what it is. It's humor. It's celebration. It's something that's been going on for such a long time. They really have a misguided idea of what queerness is. We raise money for people who are in need. We are always at bars and just being present for people on the street. A lot of people just need to have a talk with us. We are not tied to any religion, but we are not mocking anyone. Since 1979, we provide support. People have been suffering from guilt that they've been carrying, and we are just here to free the world from all the guilt, to spread universal joy we are your favorite nuns, and we are here to show people that we love them. It's very difficult. So this show is really, you know, a way to make sense of all of this real bizarre stuff that's happening. Well, and, it's, and multiple communities are being affected. Yeah. I mean, it's the immigrant community and the queer community and women. I mean, everybody's under attack. Everybody's under attack. It's um, it, it's really meaningful, though, to get to be in a place where you can stand and do comedy about these issues and really find some common ground and humor. The only way that we can survive it is to really laugh about it and kind of like absorb everything that way. And I think with that, you get some renewed energy and strength to fight it. And thank you for making us laugh during these, these dark days. Um, so when you perform in Florida or Texas or Tennessee, do you sort of feel like you have a responsibility to those audiences to kind of, I don't know, cuddle them or whatever that you wouldn't do the same way in California or New York? Do you feel like you're, you're putting a friendly face on this? Here? Yeah, because, well, it's, it's really exciting to be able to come to places where the legislation is going down, and it's really mm -hmm. scary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, in particular in Florida, because there has been this, like, warnings against people uh, from my community, from our community, of coming course. here, living here, that's really scary. Yes. Right. You know, and also the fact that the other side are heavily armed. Like, that's the other end of it, like, maybe we could fight about it if it was just a war of words, but it's, it's bullets, too. Right. And they, yes, and Florida, of course, guns are everywhere, so it's, yeah. it's pretty frightening. So at the 2023 GLAAD Media Awards, Fire Island came away a big winner. Uh, we've talked about that when we've done interviews in the past, but what does it feel like now that this movie's won a big award? What does it feel like to be associated with that movie? Every gay person has a different relationship to gay friends. It's not even that we're friends or family. I think as a gay person, oftentimes you don't have the same relationship to your family as straight people do. And this is why straight people hate us. Really almost symbolic of father, mother, sisters, mostly sisters. I love the film. I love Joel and Bowen and Andrew. Everybody in the film was just amazing, and we had such a great time. But it's really a beautifully photographed, directed, acted queer love story mm -hmm. about the greatest 
one of the greatest queer vacations in the world. So it's really special. It's a great yeah. film. And uh, I think, to me, it's just meaningful to have queer Asian American stories out there. Absolutely. Do you, could you see working with, with Andrew again or Joel and Bowen? Yeah. I have worked with Andrew again <laughs> since the filming. We did oh. a film together uh, that's not out yet, but we did a film right after Fire Island. And, you know, Joel and Bowen, I'm going to hit them up for jobs forever. <laughs> I mean, they are amazing yeah. and they're the future. Yeah. So, but they're like my children. Those so. kids, that's they're right, the kids. kids. So you're currently working on a new movie, right? Is that right? Yes, yeah. so I just finished a new film um, three days ago. Oh, wow, okay. So yeah, that was with uh, Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Oh wow. Which is really great. Wow. And it's a beautiful, beautiful film called All That We Love. Oh my, so it's more of a serious movie or? It's a drama comedy. It's it's a really, but it's, it's also a queer love story. It's like a, uh, it's very queer. It's very um, much my experience. It's a hag oh, story. My. Finally, <laughs> hags are front and center. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it's about time. It's the year of the hag. Yeah. Jennifer Coolidge is leading the yeah. way. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, so I recently saw you on the game show show. And one of the things that I thought was really cool was the way that you and some of the other interview people were talking about the queer presence in game shows? Yes. So do you have like an all-time favorite game show and do you have a least favorite game show? I think it's always gonna be Hollywood Squares, you know, with Paul Lynn. Yes, yes. And then, of course, Match Game, where you had Charles Nelson Riley, right. and then also Gong Show. Right. The, the queerness really comes through. And then um, Rip, Ta Rip Taylor. <laughs> Rip Taylor is such a, oh. it's such an interesting, um, Phenomenon, you know, and he's he's dead, but he who's never came out. No, but everybody knew. Come on, I mean, it's like we're in plain sight. Right, so it's a great saying. Sight. Yes, that's perfect. Which is great. I mean, I loved him, and I love anything that Madam was on. Matt Wade and Flowers, and, flowers. and Madam. Yes, and um, that that's Madam was probably on uh, Hollywood Squares the most. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's that's where I know. I think Madam was would really shine as in Hollywood Square. Yes, for sure. And get away with stuff they couldn't elsewhere. Well, Madam really led the charge to like RuPaul's Drag Race because you know they say so much in RuPaul's Drag Race that it goes it flies over the head of the like sort of mainstream audience. Mm -hmm. But but, but we you're know, the, yes. When you're in the know. I can't believe some of the things they say. <laughs> I'm like, how can you get away with that? But they. Nobody is, knows what it means, and so that's like queer coded. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It is our little our little secret language, which we've had to have before. Like it's like we've always had to live in secrecy. Right. So this wave of homophobia now, it's mm. it's it's really interesting because they just they really don't know us. Right. Right. <laughs> Although they watch Fire Island and they think they know us, right? They know, and they get don't. Away with so much. Right, right. So, do you think you'd make a good game show host? I would make a great game show host. Do you want to like invent a game, or do you want? I wanna... would love to do that. I mean, I think it's really fun. Like, I think it's just a fun pastime. I've always enjoyed being on them, and I, I there's a couple of ones that I play on pretty regularly. Um, that I just love. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> yes, sign me up. How great. Okay. So I happen to bring, um, I brought your 2005 book yes. uh, with me because I was thinking about how prescient it was. You write about LGBTQ+, you write about race, you write about feminism, you wrote Women in Choice, and that book was from 2005. And here we are in even worse shape in terms of those categories. Yeah. So do you feel like you sort of, I don't think, did you, you didn't predict the future, but, but are you kind of disappointed that things are still this way? I am, but also that we have gotten better too. There are certain areas where we really have done a lot of progress, like in pronouns. This is a mm -hmm. really important thing for me because now everybody who engages in business has to talk about pronouns which is this very large blanket acknowledgement of the non-binary community, the gender non-conforming community, um, the trans community, everything that they're, they're so afraid of us like changing the pronouns because it's like we're actually regulating the way that we 
talk about society, wow. which is a, such a big it deal. Is a big step. Yeah. That's why they're attacking the queer community in that regard with with them. Um, all these anti-trans bills and all the anti, like the restroom stuff. Right, right. That's where they're trying to fight it because they're trying to pick and pick and like henpeck all these little things right. because we've made such a big victory there. Right, and they don't want to lose control. It's all about control. Yeah. I mean, it's horrible, horrible. Um, do you think you have another book in you? Do you think you? I think so. I mean, I want to write a big uh, kind of a definitive story of Hollywood in terms of my experience and the queer Asian oh, experience wow. from the 90s on. Oh. So that's my ultimate goal that's is to, to write the, the sort of like history, the herstory. Um, so that's happening. And in, in my own like slow time, that's okay. happening. <laughs> okay. Um, with book banning at an all-time high, what would it mean to you to have one of your books banned? Is that like well, that's the, just just so fabulous. I mean, that I mean, I would I would be so excited, but also like, I they the right really have no business banning books. They really they, they have can't even read books. They have terrible grammar all the time. Some of the spelling. If you look, if you did a spell check on Parlor, you would be on there all day. Like you obviously they just never check it. Very true. Very true. Um, so we're speaking shortly before you're scheduled to go on at the Parker here in Fort Lauderdale. And do you have any like pre-show rituals that you do that you wouldn't mind sharing? Or I don't really have a ritual. I mean, I don't really do anything like except sometimes I'll uh, just sort of think about like, oh, what am I doing? Like, you know, maybe if there's something that's happened um, recently, you know, then I'll look through news stuff. But I'm always kind of on there anyway. But right, I work so right. much that it's sort of like it's just sort of a daily part of my life. So I don't have any ritual, really. OK. All right. Well, I'm I'm so grateful that I got to talk to you again. Yeah. And it's been really fun. And yeah. thank you very much. And we can't wait to see you tonight. Thank, thank you. you. We are Queer News Tonight, the world's first and only live daily LGBTQ plus evening news show from Happening Out Television Network. In the model of PBS and NPR, we educate, inform, and entertain by supporting the 10 pillars of the LGBTQ plus community with more than 100,000 a week watching on Roku, Apple Television, and other channels. To keep the stories going, we accept donations with 100% transparency. Stay updated and live authentically with Queer News Tonight.